once again, I want to welcome our Nordic partners. The last time that we met together was three years ago in uh, Sweden, and we had a very productive meeting again here today. As I said this morning, uh, the United States is grateful for the partnership that we have with all the countries represented around this table. Uh, they are individually not large countries in terms of population, but in terms of effectiveness, contributions, uh, ideas, energy, they are enormously important players on the international stage. And the fact that our values uh, and our interests align uh, it may be one of our most important partners. So we very much want to thank uh, their presence. And given the threats of terrorism, minority partners are making significant contributions fight against ISIL, uh, including more special operations forces, and aircrafts, and trainers, and more assistance to stabilize areas that have been liberated from ISIL, and more humanitarian assistance to Syria, uh, Syrians and Iraqis. Uh, we discussed our counterterrorism cooperation, and that includes the need to share more information. And I want to thank uh, Denmark for new commitments to the NATO mission in Afghanistan. Beyond our military campaign, we agreed that we need to work together in support of a political summit to end the Syrian civil war. And our country will continue to work together to counter violent extremism and to prevent people from being radicalized in the first place. Uh, I want to commend the contributions that these countries have made in absorbing uh, refugees. And we have a, a significant discussion around uh, the issue of migrants and refugees. I think it's useful for the American press to understand that although uh, some of the absolute numbers that are going into these respective countries may not seem that large, when you look at it on a per capita basis, uh, they are making an enormously generous effort to help people in great need. Uh, but it's important for the world to carry this burden alongside them and not allow any individual country to carry those burdens along, which is part of the reason why I'm glad uh, we have strong cooperation and participation in the summit on refugees that I intend to host in September in the margins of the UN General Assembly. Uh, with regard to European security, as we head into the NATO summit in Warsaw, Pleased that Denmark and Norway were joining the United States and contributing to an enhanced ally forward presence to bolster our collective defense in Europe. And all of our nations agreed to uh, increase cooperation between NATO and the EU. We agreed on the need to continue to support Ukraine and maintain sanctions against Russia until we can get a resolution uh, as it was outlined. Agreements that those need to be fully implemented. Uh, we're united in our concern uh, about Russia's growing uh, aggressive military presence and posture in the Baltic Nordic region. Uh, we will be maintaining ongoing dialogue uh, and to seek cooperation with Russia, but we also want to make sure that we are prepared and strong and we want to encourage Russia to keep its military activities in full compliance with international obligations. As members of the EU, Denmark, Finland, Sweden are strong supporters of TTIP. I reaffirm my intention to try to get this done before the end of the year. We discussed the importance of Europe's energy security, including the first closure of suppliers and sources and routes. Our six nations remain strong partners in climate change, including the implementation of the Paris Agreement and transition to a low carbon economy. And as Arctic nations, we committed to conservation and sustainable development that prioritize our efforts to combat climate change. We look forward to hosting the first ever White House Arctic Science Ministerial this fall to ensure that we're working together on that issue. Uh, and finally, all the leaders here are key partners in global development. The Nordic countries 
are in some of the few countries, and by the way, the United States doesn't fall in this category of meeting uh, the uh, goals that have been set with respect to uh, foreign aid and humanitarian assistance. And I'd like us to do even more. They're doing a great job. And the coordination in terms of global health security, in terms of encouraging women's education and inclusion in economies, developing sustainable development in poor countries and eradicating extreme poverty as it was outlined in the 2030 agenda. All these countries have been outstanding leaders in this process. And one of the things we discussed is how we can coordinate better so that we get more effect from uh, the common contributions that we're making uh, in that regard. So uh, I thought this was a very useful and important conversation, uh, although it was probably uh, too much agreement <laughs> to make it for as exciting a, uh, a, a multilateral meeting as uh, I sometimes participated. Uh, with that, what I'd like to do is uh, to turn it over to uh, Prime Minister uh, Welton, who is going to be uh, sharing, I think, for the group, uh, their perspective on how to meet about. So, uh, Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you once again for inviting us uh, Nordic leaders to, to this summit. We appreciate it very much. We know that uh, the United States and the Nordic countries, we share a great history. Uh, more than 11 million Americans have uh, Scandinavian heritage. So uh, we share that, but we also share many values, uh, and that was clear today. Let me just uh, give two examples. First, we agree, we agree on the need of global response to common challenges. Uh, and the transatlantic link is more important than ever. It is actually key to preserving European and, and global security. And in times when, when basic rules and norms uh, uh, of international standards uh, are contested, we stand side by side to defend them. We will not recognize the illegal annexation of Crimea uh, or accept uh, Russian aggression in, the, in Ukraine. We are convinced uh, that a negotiated two-state solution in, in is urgently needed for peace and security for both Israel and Palestine and will uh, require actions and, and responsibility. We welcome the military progress made by the coalition against Daesh while seeking to complement these efforts with strong political and civilian support. We have also agreed to, to work together to tackle the root causes of, of forced migration. I believe that we need a globally shared responsibility in handling the flows of migration and we welcome the US-led Leaders Summit on Refugees in September to which Sweden will seek to actively contribute and I will, will personally attend that uh, summit. I think it's very, very important to have a global perspective on the migration issue. The same goes for climate change, and I applaud President Obama's instrumental role in pushing for the climate agenda and the clean energy revolution in the US and globally. And our Nordic countries will, will gladly both cooperate and compete uh, in the race to reduce emission. And I can also say that Sweden aims to be the first fossil-free welfare nation in the world. Secondly, the U.S. and the Nordic countries share the belief that the best foundation for individual freedom are jobs, growth, and social investment. To create jobs, we need uh, free trade, sustainable investment uh, that embraces innovation and new technology. And that is why I'm a staunch supporter of bringing the U.S. and the EU closer together through a strong transatlantic trade and investment partnership. But with freedom comes also responsibility. We strive for a trade that is both free and fair, enables social development, creates better working conditions, and protects our environment. We share the belief that women's empowerment and participation in the workforce are necessary 
to achieve real sustainable development. Gender equality is both financially smart and a fundamental matter of human rights. Our five countries have developed what has been known as the, the Nordic Welfare Model to enable more people to work, to increase gender equality and to create socially uh, inclusive societies. And we are proud to see that those ideas are also discussed and developed here in the United States with President Obama's strong efforts for affordable health care, social safety nets and higher education system for all. I believe that seeing U.S. advance on these issues will create new ripples of hope for all of us who believe in social justice and individual freedom. And as we have read in the Atlantic, President Obama likes to say, if only everyone could be like the Scandinavians, this would all be easy. <laughs> we don't know about that, but uh, let me just add that we Scandinavians truly enjoy cooperating with the United States uh, to make life not only easier, but better and freer for all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody.